how is it that colic as a newborn can be the same thing as sensory processing challenges in a four-year-old or ADHD and anxiety in a school-aged nine-year-old or 12-year-old? How are those things all connected? Parents, we need to have a, a really important conversation about something that no one's really talking about and something that really drives me crazy and drives us crazy at Thrive. So what happens? What is the most frustrating thing you can hear when you've got a little one who isn't doing well? It's this phrase that they'll grow out of it. That drives me crazy, that drives us crazy, because that is missing the mark in so many ways. Uh, one, it's not helpful, right? It does not help you. When you've got a kid, when you've got a baby that is screaming all the time, when you've got a kid that's spinning up, when you've got someone who's struggling to latch or nurse, when you've got someone in the midst of those struggles, they'll grow out of it, helps you zero in the moment of dealing with that challenge. So it misses the mark of just understanding what you need and what's going through with that kid. But in a really even worse way, that is missing the mark because that is letting that problem get worse. The kid does not grow out of it. We see this when we are talking to the older kids, the parents of the families that have grown up. Time and time again, we see a very similar case history. We see the same challenges early on that have led to the future struggles. What this might look like is the colicky and fussy baby that's maybe struggling to latch, maybe they're not pooping regularly, not going every day, they're, they're also spitting up way too much. All of a sudden they grow out of that problem to be the four month old who's all of a sudden you realize hasn't really looked to the right. They're always stuck in the same direction and it's starting to make a flat spot in the back of their head and they're dealing with needing a helmet or plagiocephaly and those challenges. And now the, the kid six months down the road grows out of that, but all of a sudden they're dealing with recurring ear infections. And those ear infections, they eventually get through with the help of a bunch of antibiotics and maybe some tubes, and it turns into chronic tonsils and adenoids inflamed or strep throat or respiratory coughs and colds that just never go away, asthma, allergies, these things show up down the road. And that's where it kind of settles in, right? We have in these early phases of development a pretty simple model. We need to eat, we need to sleep, we need to poop. And that's really all our kids are doing. That immune system starts kicking in six, 12 months on, we need to see a strong immune response too. But development is simple in those first couple of months and first year or two. But now what starts happening? As that kid gets older, these challenges that are more relegated to digestion and, and some of that simple motor development, it starts to show up in more complex motor milestones in other neurodevelopmental things like speech that is incredibly complex. All of a sudden, since we've been stuck in these other ways, now we're dealing with a speech delay. Or it's you know a year and a half and we're just getting to walking and we never really crawled and we're struggling with fine motor control. These problems start manifesting differently at that age and it even shows up in the realm of sensory processing disorder. And then once we get to the more school, you know, kindergarten, first grade and beyond, when we have different expectations of our kids, now we're starting to have conversations with teachers about behavior outbursts, about inability to focus, maybe anxiety that that kid is dealing with, different fears or challenges. Man, that story is a heartbreaking one because it's a story of a kid struggling with really the same thing over and over and over again. And here's the key. Here's the key I want you to understand. Those are not separate challenges. From the typical medical healthcare system, they're gonna be dealt with very separately, right? You've got a siloed approach where we've got, oh, here's the ENT that's gonna poke a hole in the tubes and fix that problem. And now here's our GI specialist that's gonna work with us on the reflex or whatever the colic and fussiness is. Here's a PT to help with the torticollis and the range of motion. Those are all the same challenge. We need to start looking at it differently so we can get different results. So that's really what I want you to understand is that these isolated and separate things are really the same problem that we just keep punting down the road. We just kick in the, keep kicking the can down the road. It keeps getting worse and worse as the kid goes on. So let's flip the script on it, right? The first thing we got to do is understand what is that underlying problem. In a nutshell, it's a kid stuck in stress. It's a kid stuck in a fight or flight, a sympathetic gas pedal state. They're living in survival mode instead of a growth and development wellness mode. Now there's so many factors that can trigger that. There's chemical toxic exposures, right? The, the air we breathe, the water we drink, the, the things that are in our diet, our nutrition, or, or whatever else you're exposed to, those can trigger that survival mode, that sympathetic tone. There's emotional stresses, right? Anything from the extreme traumatic um, you know, something of, of a kid that ends up in a foster care situation because they were abused or there was drug or alcohol abuse during pregnancy and there's been both physical and emotional challenges that have come from that. 
those are big, heavy things that can be pushing a kid into that survival mode. And then there's physical stresses too. The birth process is the one that you probably heard us talk about before. That is the one that is missing in so many OB and gynecology conversations, so many pediatrician conversations. We're missing the fact that if you yank a kid out by their head and neck, whether that's a C-section or a vacuum extraction or forceps or just pulling at that head, that is going to make a huge impact on those key growth and development neurological centers in the upper neck. No matter what is triggering it, the bottom line is they're stuck in survival mode. They're stuck in that sympathetic or fight or flight state. And so all of these wellness functions, all these growth and development, what we'd call the brake pedal, doesn't ever activate or it doesn't activate as fully as it should. So we need to start asking different questions. We need to stop focusing on the symptom, stop focusing on the outward manifestation of whatever the challenge is and start figuring out why is it happening so that we can then have a different outcome. So we can get off that perfect storm pathway. Guys, I hope this helps. I hope understanding this more leads you to answering, uh, leads you to asking different questions so you can get better answers for your kids. And I hope that, well, I, I guess I kind of don't hope, I kind of do hope that that makes sense, that those dots connect. And let me explain what I mean. I, I hope that it makes sense because I want you to understand. I want you to learn. But I hope that it doesn't really connect the dots because I hope your kid hasn't been dealing with that. The sad thing is, the truth is, it, it's probably true, right? We've, we've talked to so many families that thrive that that is their story. Maybe not every single one of them, right? Every single kid's not gonna be all of those struggles throughout their lifespan, but maybe it's a couple of them, right? Maybe they've dealt with a few of those and we see those tendencies and those trends towards that survival mode state and now it's, it's just a downward spiral. It's a worsening situation and maybe we're one extra stress away from reaching a tipping point where it becomes even more problematic. So guys, keep asking questions and reach out to us, right? Reach out and ask questions on how we can help. How can we, through chiropractic, through addressing that neurological stress, change the future trajectory? How do we get that kid back on growth and development mode? That's what adjustments do. They pump the brakes, they lower that stress, they lower that gas pedal response and get that kid on track. What that looks like is we got to start with scans, we got to start with measuring and tracking that information. So we'll go through, dig into their case history, see how many of these challenges have been a part of their past, and then we'll do our scans that lets us actually track and measure and quantify those stresses. We'll get to look into how stuck are they? How deeply rooted are these issues? And then we can use those scans to monitor progress throughout care. We can keep checking in and keep seeing where are we headed? Are we on the right path? Is there something stuck still? What do we need to do? So reach out. We'd love to get your kids scanned. We'd love to get them on that path to healing and to optimal wellness. And we're here for you guys. Let me know if you got any thoughts or questions or if this makes sense and resonates and can't wait to meet you soon.